want to talk to you a little bit about ways you can come up with content ideas for your SEO using data. Because as SEOs, we have a tendency to be just a little too over-reliant on this, the Google Keyword Planner. So I think this is a really important topic to come back to and explore some additional alternative ways to come up with content ideas. I've got a really great intro, so I'll just breeze over this. My name is Paul Shapiro. Um, I have an SEO background. I am the Director of Strategy and Innovation at Catalyst. We are a search and social agency out of Boston and throughout the country. Um, I do run a couple of notable communities online for the SEO world, uh, most notably Big SEO on Reddit, uh, as well as Online Geniuses. It's a little Slack community. Yes, familiar. I have a question for all of you. Who is your favorite content provider? If you head over to slido.com, S-L-I-D-O.com, uh, you can actually go vote. And unfortunately, this was gonna be live, but they couldn't get it working on the screens, but I'll be reading off my phone. So please head over there right now, go to slido.com, and answer, enter the code CONFLUCON. Internet's working, right? <laughs> Netflix, NPR, search engine land, Netflix. Your mom, nice. <laughs> WordPress, Hulu, HBO, Gimlet. Tasty, that's a cool one. ESPN, Kissmetrics, Amazon, Buzzfeed. These are all great. Mine, my favorite content producer is Netflix. And how does Netflix come up with their ideas for their original programming? They're very smart about it. One of the things they do is they monitor BitTorrent traffic. I don't know how many people are aware of this, but sometimes Netflix produces completely original series. Other times they just sort of acquire the rights to those series and then uh, bring them to their network. So in one instance, in the Netherlands, they saw that people were downloading a ton of Prison Break. So over BitTorrent, and when they noticed that, they said, well, you know, that's, that's probably a really good show to acquire the rights for and bring to, uh, bring to our service in the Netherlands. So that's what they did. They, they saw that there was proof there that people from the Netherlands really liked Prison Break and they, they acquired the rights. Something they also do is they're, they're really bullish on, on their own data. Um, they noticed that people who liked the original BBC version of House of Cards it is a remake. Um, also really liked Kevin Spacey and director David Fincher. So they did a really nifty cohort analysis and they said, well, we think this is substantial enough that we are gonna invest $100 million in the first two seasons. They did that because they saw that's what their users liked. It was a huge success. They continued to produce you know, multiple other seasons and it's worked great for them. Now, Netflix is definitely not the only person doing this. Amazon, the other streaming provider, also really likes data and use that to inform the decisions that they use to create their content. Um, for instance, every week, uh, there's one week every year where Amazon does what they call pilot week. They essentially produce several different series, just a pilot episode, and then they ask all their users to vote on which was their favorite. That way, at the end of the week, they have a clear answer to which resonated with their customers the most, 
and then they've only invested in one episode, they can go from there and invest all their money and produce additional episodes and do a whole season. Videos are cool and all, but regular text websites are also relying heavily on data to inform their content decisions. BuzzFeed is a great example. I don't know how many of you fill out these like BuzzFeed quizzes, like people who went to OU and have brown hair, like what's your favorite animal? They target these really micro niche communities they get you to fill out a bunch of answers, and they collect a bunch of data. And that data goes along and helps them inform their other content decisions, creating this incredible cycle of really getting a lot of data about their audience, what works, what doesn't, which they go and they create more content with. This is all really important because content sits right in the middle of this. Organic search, paid search, social media, PR, you name it. I hate this. I hate content is king, it's a horrible phrase. But I must say, content is certainly the cornerstone or a cornerstone for all of these. And it is really, really important. So what can we do? How can we use data to inform our content decisions? I'll start with one of my favorite sources of data, Reddit. I'm a big Redditor. Reddit is amazing. There's a community for everything you can imagine on Reddit, of really, really passionate users who care about that subject matter who like to discuss that subject matter in depth, have conversation about that subject matter, where else can you get a community for everything? Reddit, amazing. So there's a free tool that I made. You can all download if you go to searchwilderness.com slash reddit hyphen python hyphen code. Um, you do need Python to run this, and it is password protected, so Jot down that password. Password is Fido, that's my Twitter account, F-I-G-H-T-O. Please don't share this on Twitter, though. Thanks, Ruth. Um, it's, it's pretty easy. Once you download Python, and it, this is a great uh, time if you've never done any programming, want to sort of dip your feet in, because the this, this script is pre-built for you. Uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's a good way to get your feet wet. Um, just put in uh, a subreddit or a series of subreddits, or you can choose to look at all of Reddit. You put in a series of subject matters, and it pulls all sorts of neat information. Go through uh, an example. Uh, I'm a huge horror movie fan. I used to run a horror movie blog. I run a horror movie meetup in Boston. Uh, so choosing horror as an example. So we looked at r slash horror, and I put in to the program a list of various horror movie directors. And we get this plotted out by the number of upvotes for those horror movie directors across the subreddit, and the number of comments that each of those names uh, resulted in. So number one in upvotes, hands down, John Carpenter. Um, but if you look at comments, the number two one is Eli Roth, which is very different. Um, so Eli Roth generated more discussion. John Carpenter uh, generated a lot of interest. And this, this is interesting to look at because, like I said, we rely a little too heavily on, on search volume and keyword plan of that sort of data. Um, and we really need to have a discussion about KPIs and content. Uh, this, this chart mogul did a great post recently talking about the sort of KPIs they use for their content. They really care about engagement because to them, whether someone is you know, linking to their site, 
sending them you know, a handwritten letter, you know, you know, clicking. Uh, there's all various, various degrees of engagement that they care about. Some are better than others. And to them, the higher level engagement is really more indicative of their brand and the propagation of their brand in the minds of people. So I think they have a 10 point score. Number 10, they drop by our office with a bottle of wine to say thank you. It's incredible. Um, and that certainly would be more indicative of, of a, a household brand name. And you might be thinking, well, cool, that's, that's, that's not, it's not really SEO. That's not bringing traffic to my website necessarily. It's wrong. Branding goes up, organic traffic goes up. Great example, Airbnb. It's Google Trends. Look at that, look at that trend for Airbnb versus vacation rentals. Um, all of Airbnb, Airbnb's competitors, VRBO, HomeAway, uh, TripAdvisor, they're all optimizing for vacation rentals. Whereas Airbnb took the time to build their brand, and you know what, they're getting a lot more organic traffic because of that. So, do things to build your brand, organic traffic will follow. And how do we do that? We can look at things like engagement. What topics are people engaging with? So Reddit is a really good example of that. So if we look at the same data on horror movie directors and look at them in terms of search volume, you have Del Toro at the top, George Romero at second, Alfred Hitchcock in position three. Alfred Hitchcock was hardly hardly on this chart on Reddit. People were not talking about Alfred Hitchcock on our horror. People were not upvoting topics related to Alfred Hitchcock because within this niche community, people who really, really care about horror movies, that's not too top of mind. Really, if I were to build out my horror movie blog again. I think the first place I would start, however, would be with George Romero. Um, he is number two in terms of upvotes. Pretty good number of comments. And if you look at it in search volume, he's also second in terms of search volume. So there's a good balance there. Beyond the script, there's other ways to gain insights from Reddit. There's a good uh, tool. Um, The URL is cut off, um, and I, I don't remember the URL, so I'll be tweeting that out later. Thank you. Go to Ruth's Twitter. Um, so this, this is a cool tool. You just you put in a keyword, and it, it looks at um, some of those. It provides you more keyword ideas via Reddit and. Uh, according to different subreddits. Something else you can do is you can sort of follow this pattern. You go to reddit.com slash domain, stick your competitor's domain name in there, and see which content is really resonating on Reddit uh, as a good indicator of what sort of content. Um, so a good indicator of virality, um, just given the nature of Reddit, and see what your competitors are doing. You can also do social listening. Uh, there is a number of social listening tools uh, specifically around Reddit. Uh, Track Reddit is one of them. You can just sign up um, and it'll monitor different keywords, different brand names, and give you ideas as they come along. You could also go really, really hard. There are three billion Reddit comments available, uh, very easily imported via uh, Google BigQuery, if you're a real, real like data SQL nerd, you could do an analysis on that. Um, if you go to that URL, that'll, that'll take you there in BigQuery. I think you get something like um, 
you get an exorbitant amount of, of transfer data from BigQuery for free every month. This is a, actually a tool built with a natural language, language processing library for Python. Uh, someone put it up online uh, for free to use and you sort of just, you put in a keyword and it gives you semantically related keywords as sourced from Reddit. So that's also a great source of information of content ideas. If I'm looking at this topic, what things are related to this topic? FAQ Fox, really cool tool, similar idea. Um, you put in a keyword, it looks at um, a number of niche communities. Uh, some of those are Reddit. Uh, you can sort of pick um, a label, like there's, a, there's like an animals category, and if you're doing an animal website, it'll suggest a number of niche communities for, for, for animals um, or for movies, etc. And it'll give you all the ideas from these niche communities. BuzzSumo, I think uh, some people talked to this one already. Um, there's, there's a number of insights that come out of there beyond uh, what you'd expect. So this is, they break it down by topic. So if we're looking, this is healthy eating, I believe. Um, if you're looking at the healthy eating topic, um, depression, topics of autism, migraines, as well as like meal planning comes up as a really prevalent subject matter in terms of social shares. A really good idea to think about if I'm running a healthy eating blog, I should maybe consider talking about migraines and how healthy eating could alleviate my migraines. Um, you can also use BuzzSumo in the, the traditional way. You put in a topic, like this was ketogenic diet, and see what are the top results, which, which websites, which articles receive the most social shares, and then do it better. These two examples are sort of interesting, actually. So this is ketogenic diet. The one got, hands down, way more Facebook shares, whereas the other one got way more Pinterest shares. And if you actually go through the different articles and determine why that is, it's very simple. One's not actually much better than the other. One just has way more images in it. So that's also something to consider while you're actually producing your content. What are these little nuances that help make this content better for one network versus the other. Very traditional uh, source of information for, for SEOs that sometimes gets forgotten is stick a competitor into a backlink checker, see what their best content is in terms of links. This is content that really resonated with people that they wanted to link to it, and we all know that links mean ranks. Uh, so that's, that's a really important way to be thinking about your content. So I put in my fitness pal. This is their top blog posts in terms of links. So they did a, an infographic. What 1,200 calories looks like. Meal planning, number two. Benefits of walking, number three. All great sources of ideas for your healthy eating blog. SEMrush. SEM Rush is an incredible tool. There's so much there. You get so much out of it. Um, I'm a huge fan of their API if you're really nerdy. You can get a lot of the data out of there as well. Um, but they have this one tool, the Keyword Gap. So you can put in, put in your domain, you put in a series of competitor domains. These are all prominent horror movie blogs, by the way, if they look really weird. Bloodydisgusting.com, chud.com. Red Central. So I was looking at Blumhouse, who is a, uh, it's a movie producing company for horror movies, and they uh, actually have a really great blog. So if you do that and you compare it to the competitors, you see that you know, all your competitors are talking about Blood Creek, but Blumhouse isn't even on the map. They have no keywords that are ranking for Blood Creek. They're nothing ranking for the Prowler, these are really good ideas to start thinking about, well, if all my competitors are doing this, maybe I should have some content on this subject as well. Had to do this, sorry. Return of the Living Dead, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> all right. Super, super, super nerdy. If you have a team of devoted salespeople, customer success team, you can actually, especially if you're using Gmail, you can download all of their emails, 
and use that as a data source to look at content ideas. And you can do some really crazy data mining. Um, Periscope, which is sort of like this SQL data providing um, SaaS, um, actually did a pretty cool blog post about data mining your sales emails. We've got some pretty interesting results. That's, that's a, a phenomenal source of information about content you should be considered producing. Blog comments, especially blogs that have just a really passionate audience. I, I, I'm really weird. I, I like this website, Ask a Manager. It's, it's an HR blog. Um, really, really passionate community that comments a lot. Every, I think it's every week, they do, uh, do this, she does this open thread, and people just talk about like whatever. This was like, I pulled like from the week before, had already had like 1,500 comments on it, people just talking about whatever came to mind, whatever interested them. And you can, you can go through these comments and, and data mine them. So just a simple example, this is the uh, Scraper plugin for Chrome. It's, it's really easy, you sort of like right click on things and click Scrape, and it very easily uses generates XPath and it allows you to pull in those comments and then you could put that into Excel and sort of see what's prominent in terms of discussion. This is, this is cool, I've, I've not seen anyone do this before. So you can go to a YouTube channel. This, this example is, um, I went to the Moz YouTube channel. I went to their MozCon 2015 playlist and I downloaded all the auto-generated captions from YouTube. And I very simply plotted it into a word cloud. You can get a little heavy in this. I did like TFIDF as well to sort of see what came up there. And that, that's a free tool if you uh, go to that link. Um, it allows you to very, very easily sort of just download those captions. And then you can, you can do with it what you wish. So surprising, uh, content was talked about a lot, MozCon 2015 and friends, and hope, and community. Facebook groups. Uh, so I, I have a horror movie meetup, like I mentioned. Uh, we have a Facebook group as well. So there's a Python script if you go to that link. I believe you can run this on any public Facebook groups or any Facebook groups that you have control of. And you follow the instructions and you can download all the messages in that group. And then you can sort by you know, the number of likes, the number of comments, and sort of see well, what is your community or what is this community uh, that's, that's public, what, what do they like? What, what is resonating with them? What is the content that my community likes? In this case, um, there's, like there was, there's a number of links, a uh, number of movies that came to mind here. <laughs> SlideShare. SlideShare is an amazing place for content. It's also an amazing place for content ideas. You can sort of browse through the categories, see what are their featured slides, which are the, uh, which have gotten the most views Look at the content inside those slides. Look at the topics that get those views and use that to generate your own content. It's an amazing source of information as well. Social media, there's tools like Social Mention which is totally free and you can put in a topic and it'll sort of give you the top keywords that are mentioned on Twitter and other social media sources. All great sources of information about what people are talking about. Um, and when people are talking about it, it, it usually means it's a good idea to have content about that. Okay. And you can go pretty hard with the data mining on social media. I did a, a talk at Brighton SEO in 2015, which I very lovingly explained in a blog post on my website if you want to go very heavy about how you can sort of data, uh, data mine Twitter and SERP data to come up with keyword ideas, and content ideas. Um, it's a bit in depth to go into right now, but if you guys are interested in that, do check that out. Google Trends. 
um, beyond just seeing, you know, sort of which is the more searched for and popular term, their related queries and the rising queries are great sources of information for sort of content that you should be thinking about making. Best horror movies was very related to horror movies. People want to know what the best horror movie is. They want to know what was the best horror movie in a certain year. Related queries, people are talking about specific movies. It Comes at Night was a recent horror movie release. People want to know what are the best horror movies on Netflix in 2017. All ideas for content that you should have on my horror movie blog. Excuse me. Another traditional SEO source is auto-suggest. Uh, so that's a screenshot of, of uh, Answer the Public on the left, which really does a good way of visualizing auto-suggest data. It's also keyword tool IO, which very easily allows you to get access from uh, some additional data sources like YouTube, Amazon, eBay, Bing, the App Store. Pinterest, guided search, this little thing that appears above the search at the top of Pinterest, amazing. I put in horror movies, and it gives me all these other things that it's suggesting that I look into. What's the scariest horror movie? 80s horror movies, classic horror movies, funny horror movies, horror movie artwork. Incredible sources of information there. Instagrock, that's a pretty cool tool. You put in a topic, it sort of gives you related topics. I don't know where they get the data from, but it's really amazing. And I don't know how many people have read A Stranger in a Strange Land, but the name Grok, oh my god, that's so cool to me. Cora, uh, Cora, used to be that you could get this via RSS feed. I believe they discontinued that, which is really unfortunate, but if you go into a topic on Quora, you get to see, you know, what are, what are, what are what is really engaging the audience? What are people, um, what are people curious about? What questions do they need answered? Which of these questions is getting the most views on Quora? Which of these questions is yielding the most answers on Quora? Amazing source of information about which content you should be producing. And it's all public. See, this got 54,000 views, got 13 public follows. What are the effects of eating bananas every day? I had a banana this morning. Search Console, Google Search Console, also known as Google Webmaster Tools. Um, it's great, it'll give you a lot of data about what's getting clicks, um, what your click-through rate is, where you're getting impressions. Um, but if you look at Search Console data, I think sometimes we get too, bo too bogged down with what is successful and not enough looking at what isn't successful. Oops. So you can actually look at, look at the, the queries that have impressions and like absolutely no clicks. These are things that you probably don't have content on but are like really highly related because they're getting picked up for like long tail searches. Um, it might be a really good indicator of some content you should consider producing because it's highly relevant to stuff that's on your website right now and it's coming through an organic search already. Know thy audience. Very important for content production. So how can we understand who our audience is when it comes to, to search? There's a lot of clickstream providers that aid in try to give you, give you access to this sort of information. Um, this, this is Hitwise. It's a little bit pricey. It's definitely an enterprise tool, but it's, it's awesome. Uh, so I looked at the ser people who searched horror movies and compared it to the general population. This is specifically horror movies. Uh, in terms of gender, it was fairly even. Uh, it tended to trend to, to lower income individuals, um, very liberal individuals. Also, it was very interesting that the most, um, it looked at which of these people actually went to the movie theater and saw a different genre movies, and they actually didn't go to the theater and watch horror movies. More commonly, they watched action, drama, and adventure movies in the movie theater. So what does this mean to me? To me, this is indicative that people are searching horror movies, very broad term. They're not my audience. 
they're not my audience. They are just sort of casually browsing the internet looking for horror movies. They are not the people that are really passionate about horror movies. They are not my audience. I should be looking at other search terms to drive my content. Not just plainly horror movies. It's too broad. Analytics. Google Analytics. Now they give you all this audience data, those affinity categories. That's looking at your existing uh, content and see like who are the people that that content is resonating with. What are they interested in? Use this stuff to build personas, guys. This is this is invaluable. Facebook Pixel. I don't care if you're doing Facebook advertising or not. It's free. You can put a Facebook Pixel on your website, and you get access to like information about the Facebook audience. It gives you all sorts of demographic data. Because this household and purchase category gives you all sorts of really, really interesting information about how people are purchasing and, and sort of how they, they deal with their, their finances in their household. Awesome. Use this to build personas. Google Display Plan. Again, you don't have to be using GDN. You can type in keywords and get all sorts of information about you know, people who search horror movies. What, what is their interest? What are their affinity categories? And how relevant is it to, to my audience? I don't even have to have an existing website. I can just look at this by keyword. Uh, Bing, Bing Ads Intelligence, this is an ex, a free Excel plugin. Um, you log in with your, your Bing Ads account. You don't have to have any active campaigns and it'll look at some interesting information by keyword. So it'll give you sort of age and demographic as well as actually give you some pretty interesting keyword generation tools. It's a little bit less robust than the other ones I mentioned, but it's still really cool. Surveys. You can just ask your audience what they like. Um, this is generated with a tool called Queries, but you know you can use something like Qualaroo or, or Hotjar, something that sort of integrates analytics and surveys together. Um, so this was one I had demoed like a long time ago for, for my personal website. I asked, um, it's an SEO blog, I asked what, what, what is your profession uh, and you know what type of post would you be most interested in? So people were pretty evenly freelance SEO, agency SEO, uh, social media marketer, and they were really interested in data-driven research and case studies. I ran this for like, like a day. So, hopefully you come away with this, got some ideas about how to generate content, and you're a little less reliant on Google Keyword Planner. Thank you.